We are going to take a look at how to create this syringe today. And we're also going to talk about how to create a motion with some limits. So let's get started. First thing we'll want to do is we'll want to go out there and we'll want to get the files. So I'll plop a link up here. And so you can see at the bottom of your screen, there's a link that you're going to want to go to. You probably have to type that into your browser. So you might want to pause the video. After you download the link, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take you to a zip file. And what you'll do is you'll double click it and you'll see all of the files in there. In order for this to work, you're going to have to copy all of these. So I usually click on the first one, hold my shift key down and click on the last one. Then I'll right click, then I'll just hit control C for copy. And then I'm going to have to find the folder that I need it to go to, right? So typically you would want this wherever you're going to save your uh, all the rest of your parts for this particular project. So I'm just going to create a new folder. I would want to rename it hydraulics for now. I'll just go ahead and right click and I'm going to paste those files in there. So I can either right click and hit paste or I can hit control V and it'll put them in there. All I should have to do is click the syringe, right? I should just double click that. Everything should be working. I should be able to pull those out and everything else, okay? Let's go ahead and talk about how to deal with this, though, or how to create this syringe from scratch. So I'll say new, and I'll just pull up an assembly file. And I'm going to go ahead and place, and I'm going to go out to that folder, right? And I'm going to find these three files. I need the outer casing, the plunger tip, and the plunger. So again, I'll just click on the top one and hold shift. I'll go ahead and open it up and I'll left click to place, right click and say OK. Now at this point all of these parts are separate so we can move them around. First step I'm going to want to do though is I'm going to actually ground the outer casing. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say grounded. All right, so that part's not going to move now. The other two parts are though. Right? So the next step I'm going to go up to constrain and I'm going to set an insert constraint here. I need these two pieces, the plunger tip and the plunger itself, I need those to be put together. So I'm going to zoom in. You see how I click that outer, like the ring? So I'll click that. And then I'm going to zoom and rotate around and zoom back in on the plunger here. And I want to get right in there. See that? how I'm clicking the outside of the circle? So I'll click it and I'll hit apply. All right, so those two pieces are put together now. So here's the next step. Now we're going to actually use a joint this time. Normally we use constraints because that gives us a lot better control. I want to zoom in on this. I want to make sure that I get that flat. See how it's flat, not rotated, and it went all angular. I want to make sure that it is flat, just like that. So I'll click it. I'll rotate it around. And I really just want to click right about there. See where it's flat still? Go ahead and click that. Okay, now I want to look at my type here. It's rigid. I don't want that. I want it to be cylindrical because this thing would push and turn actually. I'll go ahead and hit apply and what you'll see is the plunger itself will come over there and join the plunger tip. So I'll hit apply and now it moves over there, right? So if I go ahead and exit out, you can see that it moves in and out, but that's not natural at all. So let's go ahead and let's kind of get it in place. That would be about where it would go, right there. Now I'm going to go up here. If you haven't already, if you expand the relationships, hit the little plus sign there, you can see the different constraints. We've got an insert, which is where we put the tip onto the plunger. We're going to right click on cylindrical and say edit. And I can actually click up here where it says limits. Now there's angular and there's linear. I'm going to go ahead and hit linear because this is going to move right back and forth. So I'll hit start. My starting position, I can go ahead and leave there, right? We kind of already moved it into that. So that's okay. Let's click end here. And let's start putting some numbers in there. Let's say, give me a negative three. And you see where it moved it to? See the blue line? That tells you about where that's going to end up. I think we can probably put a 0.25 on there. So now I'll hit OK. So there's my numbers that it worked for me. Now when I slide that back and forth, it's not going to go past the limits that we set. Right? It's ready and good to go. All right, so from there, you would actually go ahead and save that file because you could use that now, right? While we're here, and something you're going to be able to do, you're going to be creating spots for these syringes to go in, correct? So I can press the M key anytime, 
and that allow me to measure the pull up measure and I can click on the outside and it tells me hey look there's the radius there's the diameter so I get all kinds of information on that part 